Hello. My name is Amy Carrier, and I am holding my uh, live lesson for Amy Carrier's classroom here on Rehan's page today. And in just a minute or two, I'll tell you why. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I need to take just a moment here to um, share this, this video in my classroom. So I'm broadcasting on Rehan's page. Um, Rehan and I do a weekly show on Fridays. And we've talked about uh, a lot of things that I teach. And he's offered for me to teach my weekly lessons on this page. Um, I don't always do that, but this week it's very important. Um, I want to reach as many people as I can, um, and you'll see why. So while I am sharing our um, while I am sharing our video, please say hello, introduce yourself, let me know that you're here, and please take a moment to share this video on your own page. Um, we're going to be talking about something that's relevant to absolutely everyone in the world today. Um, it's, it's not just related to entrepreneurship and building your career, though it's essential for you to do that, uh, but it will be the one thing that I know everyone here is going to feel like they have been missing. So I'm going to help you learn how to build it in your life. So like I said, bear with me. I'm sharing this video. Um, and if you would do the same, I would appreciate it. And please say hello. Hello, Mohammed Amir. Oh, Hassan, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Um, so... Hassan, if you would share this in our classroom, I would appreciate that. And, okay, so one more share. Um, and please, uh, in addition to saying hello, let me know if you know who I am. Again, my name is Amy Carrier. I am a entrepreneurship teacher. I am also a life and career coach. And... The, the issue that I'm going to be talking about today is just so important to me because it has come up without exception with absolutely everyone I'm working with, everyone in my virtual classroom, uh, which is Amy Carrier's Classroom. It's a group here on Facebook, so please join it if you're not already a member, and you will see how it is coming up there you'll see how it's coming up um, on my page please uh, add me or follow me my name is amy carrier i have tagged myself in the introduction of this video so you will be able to uh, you'll be able to follow me that way and it's it's an issue that as humans we all have so um and I'm not excluded from that because I'm a human and I have challenges around this as well. So uh, it's one of the things I've decided is really the most important thing for me to talk about. Um, even more so than going into like the next lesson that I want to teach on uh, building your, um, your business plan. So. Let me see who's here. I've shared this in a couple places now. I need to share it once, uh, one more place, I just realized. Uh, so tell me who's here. Who's, who are you? Hi, Shiraz Qureshi, how are you? Good to see you also. Uh, Hafiz Abu Harara, hello. Um, Sharuka Butt uh, says, pitching and started losing myself. Guide me the ways to have enough confidence. You definitely want to be here for today's lesson because that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you see the heading for this lesson today, you'll see the hashtag of self-confidence. Um, 
And it's really, honestly, the most important thing that we all need and that most people are lacking. So I want to talk to you about what you can do about that and how you can help yourself, how you can change your life and um, find what you need to build what you want to build in the world. So on that note, uh, let me take a moment here. Great. I see more people are joining us. Thank you. Today we're talking about building your self-esteem, your self-confidence, um, and how you can turn that into achieving your goals. Um, so those of you who are in Amy Carrier's classroom, we talk about building businesses. We talk a lot about entrepreneurship and um, the lessons tend to have been really focused on the pieces of that. But it's important to me to talk about the other side, the soft skills related to being a successful person in the world. So um, I've shared this in my classroom now. And welcome to those of you I don't know. Uh, my name is Amy Carrier, and Rehan and I work together. We have a weekly show called Ask Amy Entrepreneurship Show on Fridays, uh, which he hosts here on this page. And uh, the two of us in tandem answer your questions about starting your businesses and about entrepreneurship. So um, I'm going to ask, like I always do, for everyone who's here watching to please share this video. So I can actually see who shared it. Uh, and so far, nobody shared it. So I'm a teacher. Um, I'm teaching you right now watching this. But you are a student, and that means it's your place to help other people learn as well. Um, and doing that makes you a teacher without actually having to teach anything. So please take a moment right now to share this live video. Um, this is probably the most important lesson I've taught so far. Um, it's related to, it's similar to finding your life purpose. Uh, and I think those of you who found that lesson to be very valuable, and many people did. I actually made a mini three-minute lesson out of that longer lesson so that you could have a kind of a bite-sized piece. And I'll probably do that with this lesson as well. So um, please go ahead and share. Uh, and let me say some hellos. Um, Numan Zahid, hi, how are you? Husna Azim, hello, thank you for the smiley face. Uh, Mohammed Juhanzeb Khan uh, says, I'm Pakistani and studying computer science and you want to be an entrepreneur. That's great. So we're going to talk about the foundational piece of being an entrepreneur that you need today. So um, I'm going to ask everybody to share. And I'm also going to ask everybody to please... Um, Tell me in the comments if you feel that you don't have self-confidence or self-esteem, tell me why. This is all going to play into um, today's lesson. And I'm still waiting for people to share. I don't see a single share happening here. So you're waiting for me to start the lesson. I'm waiting for you to be a student in my classroom and share this lesson. So please do that. And if there's anyone you think would benefit today from having an interactive lesson and learning about self-confidence, self-motivation, self-esteem, and finding the internal fuel you need to build what you want to build in the world and um, the internal motivation to achieve your goals, please share this video with that person. Um, or those people right now. And like I said, I can see shares. I don't see a single share. So come on, guys. I've got all these great notes for today's lesson. Um, they're all down here, but I'm going to wait until I see some more shares. So please do that now. All you have to do is hit the share button. It's super easy, super fast. And um, you never know, just like you may have stumbled upon this lesson today, you never know when someone will stumble upon what you're sharing and it ends up being exactly what they needed to hear today. And speaking of that, I, it's uh, in my world, it's 1 p.m. So 
it's still kind of midday. And I've been kind of surprised because I've got so many messages. I've received so many messages this morning from either clients who want to talk with me as soon as possible, or from people who are in my classroom, or from just friends who need time to talk to me. And what that's telling me is that there's something going on in the world. There's something that people are feeling overwhelmed by, that they're feeling like they need help, they need support, um, they need somebody to help give them some guidance or say some magic words to help them solve the challenge they're facing right now. So let's be, let's be a good community member and share this video. And guys, it's really, it's making me sad at this point. Nobody shared. Nobody shared. Okay, Mohammed Mohi, Moshin Ali says that he shared. Thank you. Um, I don't actually see the share yet because they show up, uh, but nobody else. So if you shared, please write the word shared in here um, because I am going to wait for that. And I'm also waiting for you to tell me what are the things that hold you back um, when it comes to feeling confident. And um, this is an interactive lesson. I'm going to teach for the first half, which is about the first 30 minutes, and we'll start in just a couple of minutes. And then for the last 30 minutes, it's interactive uh, question and answer time. So. This is your opportunity to ask some questions. And I might actually be a little bit more flexible in today's, um, in today's lesson because uh, this, is, this is really important for everybody to tune into and everybody to be able to ask their questions and to kind of troubleshoot. Tabitha Santana, thank you for joining. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Husna Azim says shared, thank you. Mohammed Amir says shared, thank you. Mohammed Faisal says shared, thank you. Awesome. All right, guys, now we're getting somewhere. Um, this is exactly what we need to happen. So let's get started with the issue of self esteem. And I'm looking for this one last group where I need to share this and why can't I find it? I've been added to so many groups that it's like hundreds I have here. <laughs> All right. So see, you help me by sharing so that I don't have to do that while I want to be talking to you. So here I am. So um, let's just see the comments real quick. Hi, Asim Ali. How are you? Um, I'm well. And I know it's been a while since I've been uh, teaching a lesson in the classroom. Um, I had a holiday and then I was just too busy after I returned to carve out this hour and a half or two hours uh, of my Monday. And then I was sick last week. So I've missed you all very much. I'm very happy to be back, to be here with you and to interact with you. So. Uh, make sure you share your comments and ask your questions. So um, someone whose name is in uh, Hebrew says, what about panic attack? We're going to, this. what I'm talking about today is related to all of it. Panic attack, anxiety, lack of self-confidence. That's why I'm saying you hit share right now. You hashtag this. How to, how to manage panic, how to manage lack of self-esteem, how to manage anxiety. Um, uh, Muhammad Asif says, I always fear to talk with people specifically when more than one person. You know, so one of the things that I wanted to say today, I was actually just um, running around my apartment taking care of some things before I jumped on here, and I kind of had my my dialogue, my lesson in my mind. And one of the first things that I wanted to say, that I want to say to you all today, is that anything I teach, um, I've gone through personally. And uh, Muhammad Asif, I have gone through exactly what you're talking about. There was a period in my life where professionally I had just moved into this 
new job. I was building something new and I was literally responsible. I was the, the leader of the whole thing and I was responsible for talking to everyone about it. And I had never had anxiety before, but I developed this panic uh, about talking to people, um, talking to groups of people, talking to individuals. Um, and I, I remember one time I had to get up and walk out of a meeting, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a gentleman because I couldn't breathe. And I didn't know what to do. Do I tell him I can't breathe? Do I just excuse myself and go to the bathroom? Like it's my offices. So if I've invited him in, clearly I've taken care of my, you know, personal needs of going to the bathroom before he arrived. I, I couldn't, I didn't have anything that I could say to excuse myself. I, I don't remember how I did, but I had this deep panic. So, um, and one of the things that I want to say to you in your journey in life, make sure you find the teachers who are teaching you from their own experience. Um, the teachers who have learned how to personally overcome what they're talking about. Uh, and what I'm talking about today and anything I ever teach about, I have faced myself. So, um, and it's important to me. It, it makes me authentic. It means that I have integrity with my work, with my coaching, uh, that I understand everything I'm talking about. It's not just a concept. A concept. It's not something I've studied from someone else. Um, I may have gone on to do further study to, to educate myself, but everything that I teach about, I have experienced myself. I have struggled through myself. I've suffered through myself. Um, and it's why I made this choice to teach these things. So I don't teach medicine. Um, I don't teach accounting. I teach what I teach. So if you're not already a member of Amy Carrier's classroom, uh, please join because you'll find that it's, uh, we talk a lot about entrepreneurship and I believe that that is the future of work and the economy and um, building solutions in our global community. Uh, so that's why I teach about it. But the way I teach entrepreneurship is not going to be like anyone else because I'm going to get very deep and very personal with you. Uh, and anything I teach you is going to be what I have learned to be the most valuable way to do something. So I posted a picture, a photo this week on my page. Uh, to those of you who are my friends on Facebook or who follow my Amy Carrier page, my, my page, me, um, you saw that. And it was actually, um, it was graffiti that I saw in a bathroom uh, at a restaurant where I was this week. And I took the photo and it said, I believe in myself. And I posted it. I posted it on Facebook because... Self-belief is so important, but how do you get there? How do you get there? So I'm asking you all this question. How do you get to self-belief? If you don't know, then tell me you don't know in the comments. So let me actually scroll into the comments again and see. Uh, the comments do not scroll on my screen, so I have to, um, I have to look at my phone. Uh, so PJ, hi, how are you? Awesome, Ali, Nazir, um, Osama Kamal. Osama Kamal says, how can one survive in a totally new society in which she's con he or she is considered an alien? That's a great question. In fact, I would love it if you're not already. Join my classroom and ask that question. It's bigger uh, than what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, Talal Rashid says, I'm totally confused when I talk to government officers uh, or people who hold status. Okay, so that's a self-esteem thing. It's self-esteem. So uh, I, when I saw that, that graffiti in the bathroom last week and I took a photo and I posted it on my page, that was clear to me that that's what I wanted to talk about today uh, as my weekly Monday lesson. 
And what I found, as I've been saying here already, is that my, my clients, um, 100% of the time, lack self-esteem, lack self-confidence, um, or believe they do. Now, I look at my clients, and it's my job as a coach to reflect back to them and say, you know, I'm sitting here talking to someone, listening to someone who I think is incredible, who has a tremendous amount of value and so much to offer. So let's work on uh, self-confidence and self-esteem. And so as I'm working with my clients and as I'm always trying to learn what's the best way to help someone else to learn these skills, um, the thing that's become very apparent to me uh, is that there's something that's missing in in people's lives and by the way just a quick aside I don't see any shares on the video so I hope you'll I hope you'll share um, I know some of you said that you've shared and thank you for that maybe the interface here on Facebook is just kind of broken and not telling me uh, who's shared um, so I'll trust you over Facebook at this point. Um, so, you know, and I was also talking to uh, Rehan last week after our show, and there was a question that was asked, um, you know, how does someone without an education have the confidence to do something, to build a business, for example? Now, I answered that question from my perspective in the West, where someone without an education means someone who uh, doesn't have a degree past high school because here in the United States, it's it's um, illegal to leave school without a degree. Now, young people can drop out of school. That's a different issue. We don't need to go into it. But um, Rehan told me that the, the question was actually different from Pakistan. Um, and he helped me to understand uh, that what lacking in education meant in Pakistan uh, is, is different from what it might mean in the West. Uh, and that was helpful for me. And what he said is that it could very well mean that that person has never been to school, cannot write, and cannot read, cannot even write their own name. So how do you have self-confidence? if you're in that position, right? Um, and that's, my answer is still the same. Because if you follow my education work, you'll know that I'm a big proponent of um, changing the education system, of true education reform that actually empowers students to find their gifts and then asks of education systems and schools and teachers to work with students to help them build their gifts rather than rather than work them through you know the the standard curriculum of maths and science and literature those are helpful those are important those are valuable but what we're finding globally is that most people don't even have access to that so how do you help those people if they can't write their names? How do you help to empower them? How do you help the, to teach them to build businesses, to find their self-esteem, to achieve goals, to set goals? So one of the things that I've really been thinking about, uh, and the other thing that Rehan told me last week is that we were talking about this, you know, what is the, the internal motivation, um, which is, that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about here today that intrinsic motivation what motivates you now here in the United States many many people live alone or many many people are just in couples they don't have a family to support um, so their motivation may be paying um, rent or paying mortgage or just you know paying their bills that's that's their motivation um, but the more I talk to Rehan and the more I learn from my students in Pakistan, uh, in fact, I don't know if he's here, but I had a chat this weekend with a Pakistani living in Dubai um, 
who reminded me that many, many people in the world, their motivation for work is a large family. They're responsible for their spouse, for their children, for their parents. So, um, and this is what I ended up talking with Rehan about on Friday as well, which is, so these people, if this is you, if your motivation to work and to make money is to support, you know, maybe 15 people in your family, how do you have the confidence to transition or to start a business, right? Um, so even if your, your motivation feels like it's your family or paying bills, um, if you live in the West, your motivation won't last. That's not where your passion comes from. Your passion has to come from inside of you, and your passion has to be fueled by um, your own personal joy. So here's the magic word for today, for my lesson, and that is joy. And joy seems, this, this is actually a word that I've struggled with over the years through my own spiritual and personal growth. Okay, so joy. Well, I have a lot to do today, so how can I focus on joy? Or I just got bad news today, so how can I focus on my joy? In fact, that happened to me one hour before I got on here. I got a phone call that was very, um, it was upsetting, it was disturbing, and it's, it's put a new problem uh, in front of me that I have to somehow work through and solve. And it's an emotional problem because it's related to someone I care about. So um, where was my joy? So knowing and, and, you know, walking around thinking about today's lesson, where is my joy right now when I'm being challenged one hour before I need to go online and talk to the world about finding their joy and using it as internal motivation, internal fuel. Um, it's also called intrinsic motivation to do what I want to do in the world. What do I do when I get pulled out of those moments where I can't feel my joy? And this is part of my joy. I wouldn't have started Amy Carrier's classroom. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a couple of hours on the first day of each week, right in the middle of the day, doing this if it weren't my joy, if it weren't fulfilling for me what I feel uh, my calling is and my work in the world is. But it does. It brings me joy. It makes me happy when I see when I see these names pop up on the screen. When I see people who are already my friends pop up. Um, hi Carla. Hi hi other Carla. Um, and hi Carla says, say hi. I'm here for a second. Having leadership mentoring. Um, have a sacred, sacred state of mind. So, by the way, Carla Trigo is another new mentor in Amy Carrier's classroom, and she had her first live lesson there today, and it was amazing. I actually ran out of time to watch the whole thing, but I watched like two thirds, and I messaged Carla because she is going to be talking about something that's so important to me, so valuable to me, and that is um, taking. Uh, um, Oh, Carla, you had a beautiful word for it. Can you can you tell me again? Um, taking a break from all of the information, information overload, data overload that comes to us, uh, especially since we're all on Facebook, right? And we have to we have to manage ourselves and not spend an, an entire day on Facebook um, or an entire day reading news or whatever it is that you do that kind of feels like it's a little bit of an addiction that maybe isn't the most helpful for you to build your joy and find your peace. That is one of the things that Carla uh, is going to be teaching about. So please join the classroom, follow Carla, connect with her, watch what she um, posted today. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Um, Carla, thank you for being a new mentor in my classroom. So I I want to make sure that everyone, and this includes the children that I'm working with, 
everyone really understands that ultimately the only thing that's ever going to consistently move you forward in the best expression of yourself is going to be your own personal joy. And you'll see signs that you need to find your own personal joy in so many circumstances in your life. So like today when I got this phone call and it immediately upset me, hurt me, made me emotional and, and like totally distracted me from my thought pattern about how I wanted to come in and introduce today to you all. I felt like I lost my joy and I didn't want to do that. Um, but I'm human, like you're human. And um, you'll see signs of that when it comes up, when you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not somebody who overreacts, but this is triggering me right now. You'll see signs of it in your relationships where most of the time, you know, you're really kind and, and sweet and thoughtful and level-headed and loving, and then something happens and you get triggered and you either get upset or you get defensive or you get offensive and you, you fight or you say something unkind. These are all signs that you need to do the work to find your internal joy. And anytime you, you try to seek it outside of yourself, um, you'll find an instant fix, right? So sometimes when I'm, um, when I'm really feeling kind of yucky, uh, I might read some jokes just because it kind of brings me up, but it's not, it's not a solution. It's a, it's an in the moment solution, right? Um, and then there are other ways to do this. Some people have addictions. Some people get so stressed out, they have to smoke a cigarette or they have to drink alcohol um, or, you know, they, they just go into this habitual uh, behavior that distracts them from the yucky feelings that they're having. And it's those yucky feelings that you need to actually stay with and learn from so that you can identify what they are and bring yourself back to joy. Are you guys, is this making sense? Is it, are you following? Thank you, Carla. She called it a low information diet. I love that. I tell my clients this and I try to help them because um, I think, you know, Facebook has been around so long and I don't have television. So I also do not follow any news channels. Um, in fact, most of the news, if I feel like I need to get it, I call my mom and I'm like, mom, just tell me the headlines because I feel like it's such low energy. It's toxic. Um, there's always spin. Um, it's always news is always filtered through someone else's um, lens, someone else's politics, someone else's um, priorities. And I, I just I don't need that in my life. That's part of me maintaining my joy. So um, learn from Carla how to have a low, informa a low information uh, diet. So if you understand that you can't seek the joy outside of yourself through an addiction or through a distraction, both of those things, this world is filled with distractions and filled with addictions. And um, distractions can become an addiction. So if you're someone who knows that you pull out your phone 100 times a day, you're addicted. Even if you pull out your phone 25 times a day, you're addicted to it. Um, yes, it's a tool. It's a tool that we need to use for communication. We need to use for work. Um, I have to use mine all the time for both of those things. But I know that if I'm pulling it out because I don't want to think about what I'm feeling right now or I don't want to face what I'm feeling, it's an addiction and I'm using it to escape. So you don't want to do that. Um, yeah, you just you don't want to do that. You want to work on finding your joy. So I've got some notes here. Um, the only true way joy can be found is within. And it is the endless source of fuel for everything you want to do for the rest of your life until you take your last breath. It is joy. And it is the greatest pursuit you will ever have 
in this lifetime is finding your joy. Can you sit by yourself doing nothing, talking to no one, and find your happiness? And I don't have a shortcut for you right now to tell you how to do that other than doing it. Sit by yourself. Feel your feelings. If you feel if you feel afraid, if you feel anxious, if you just feel gross, if you feel like, man, I want to distract myself right now, that's a sign that you need to sit with yourself. You need to feel your feelings and you need to let them come up and come out so that you can release them and then find the joy that's underneath that. Um, and the the reason I'm talking about this uh, on Rehan's page and in my classroom right now is because everyone who comes to my classroom, to our shows, um, our weekly entrepreneurship show, who wants to be an entrepreneur, Rehan and I on Fridays during our show, we get so many questions. I have $500. I have no money. I have $10,000. What business should I start? And I always say, and he he said he has his answers, but I always say, if you start from money, even if you start from lack of money, you'll never succeed because you don't have your personal internal motivation and your internal fuel that will keep you going and keep you successful in uh, building what you want to build. So let me just pop in here real quick and say thank you all for sticking with me. Um, please hit the share button right now. Um, Rehan and I believe in teaching everything out for the world uh, to learn from. This is why he has this page. This is why he's brought teachers like me in to teach you on this page. So please hit share. Um, and I'm talking about joy and how finding your internal joy is the secret to finding your self-confidence and your self-esteem. Because if you are doing things for external reasons, um, if you are working or trying to build a business for reasons that aren't inside you, your passion, your joy, you won't succeed or you won't last very long. And it's, it's hard. It's hard for all of us. Right. So those of you who are in Pakistan, who your culture dictates that you work for uh, supporting your family. I understand that that's a challenge. That's 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 one of your motivations. You need to make sure that it's not your only motivation. It's a very noble motiv motivation, but it can't be the only one because you need something that's deeper, deeper. Um, so when I work with my clients and they want to take either a leap of faith or transition into a new career, or go from being someone's employee to starting their own business, they hire me to coach them, to get them through all these challenging spots, right? This is what I'm talking to you about for free today. They hire me to actually coach them one-on-one -on -one to move them through all of this, because it's not easy. It's really not easy. I've gone through this. Um, and I'll just tell you right now that I was six years ago, I was so excited. You know, I had savings in the bank um, to start my, my business. I had gone to Africa and worked there. I came back. I, got, I had an amazing, I had the best first client I could have had, uh, the biggest school system here in my state. And everything was going great. It was amazing. Now, I had health issues that were getting worse and worse and worse. And my mistake was not loving myself through those health issues. I just kind of said, uh, it's okay, it's okay. I don't need to focus on them. So what ended up happening, my challenge, uh, and now that I look back on it, I wasn't focused on my joy. I wasn't focused on my self-love. I wasn't focused on taking care of me first. I was focused on, I'm one of those people who has a really big vision for the world, really big person, personal and professional goals. There's a major, major challenge I want to tackle in this world, and that is changing our education system, changing the way we prepare young people to become adults all around the world. 
This is my personal mission. I was so focused on that and not focused on myself that I, uh, I had major health problems. I wound up having a, a health emergency. I wound up in the hospital. I almost died. I had surgery. And then I continued to, my body continued to break down for two years after I almost died. So I got worse. And it wasn't until I finally understood that I had to focus on me. I had to love me. I had to find what makes me happy and what makes me feel, feel joy inside. Um, not just for the external reasons, not just for, oh, I've been successful. I got the biggest client I could get. Um, I got, you know, I got this press. I was on CNN. I, you know, not just those external things and not even relationships, not even, you know, I've got this great friend or I have a loving relationship with my partner. Those things are still external. Those are helpful and everybody needs community and family and friends who support them and lift them up through challenging times, but you still have to love yourself first. So this idea of joy, um, and I'm gonna move to questions very soon, but this idea of joy and loving yourself are very much sisters. Because if you love yourself, you're going to focus on finding your own internal intrinsic joy. You're going to do the hard work of asking what is it that makes me happy? How do I stop, stop distracting myself and find my joy, my happiness? And there's lots of things you can do. You can learn to meditate. Um, you can join uh, some sort of spiritual community that helps to uplift you and teach you ways to connect with your joy. But I'll say that the other thing that, that's very valuable is trusting in the flow of life. And that's very, very, very hard to do because the flow of life includes highs and lows. And most of us, because we're human and we don't like to be unhappy and we don't want to suffer, we want the highs. We don't want the lows, but life goes like this. So how can you find joy even when you're down here? I haven't perfected it yet. I'm working on it. I'm trying. I will continue to come back and talk to you about my journey. But I know that flowing with life, trusting life, and this is coming from someone who is such a planner and an organizer and a scheduled person and a thinker, I still have had to learn how to trust the flow of life and how to surrender, how to accept that if I'm too tired right now and I'm convinced in my mind that I have to finish this project, but I can't even hold my head up, you have to trust the flow of life. And that means you need to trust that right now you need to walk away from what your mind is telling you you have to do and do what your heart and your body are telling you you need to do right now. So this flow of life, once you trust it, once you get into it, you'll actually see that there are signs and there are different opportunities that come up along the way. And when we're too stuck in here, we don't see those opportunities that come along. So let's say we're having a high, right? So we're up here, we're really excited. Like for me, my, my low started coming with my health and then I hit this bottom when I wound up in the hospital because I almost died because my appendix ruptured. And I, I wasn't looking for the signs when I was going down, when I was experiencing more of a low. I wasn't listening to the signs. The signs were, Amy, there's something wrong with your body. You need to pay attention to your body. You need to love your body. You need to take some time off. You need to explore. Maybe you need to eat something different. Maybe you need to go to a different doctor if the first one or the second one, or I saw so many doctors, aren't helping you. So... 
there will be signs. And those signs oftentimes come from your heart. They come from your intuition. And they will help you to know what to do. Don't just listen to your mind. Your mind is also a tool, like your phone, like technology, like this computer that I'm looking at right now. It's a tool. Don't use it as a replacement for your logic, for your intuition, for your, your body's messages. So one of the things that I want to, the points that I want to make before I move into questions about this stuff, um, and I want you to understand that when it comes to self-confidence and self-esteem, this is where you're going to find it. So I told you when I work with my clients, this, there's, there's this lack of self-confidence and belief in me and my right to go talk to a government official or to go make this presentation. Um, that lack of belief comes from not tuning into yourself not finding your joy, not finding your peace. So I can give you some tips on how to do this. And the first one is to, it's what I talked about with Carla, um, the, the classes that she's going to be holding in my virtual classroom. Um, the first one is detox. You need to detoxify everything. So my appendix ruptured because my body was so filled with toxins. Now, my body was filled with toxins because I'm highly allergic and sensitive to many, many foods. No doctor ever caught this. No doctor ever said, maybe we should test you for food allergies. No one ever did. I didn't listen to myself. Um, so my appendix, which is literally kind of part of your detox center, was so full of toxins doing its job that it ruptured. And then those toxins flowed through my body and caused other problems. So you want to detox your body and you do that by eating as healthy as you can, by not drinking, by not smoking, by making sure that you're exercising. And when you do these things for your body, they seem kind of like work and they are until you build the habits. Um, you, you're loving your body and you are, literally in the action of having confidence in yourself and your ability to manage and own this beautiful body that you've been given. You only get one and it gets older the longer you have it. So love it. Take care of it. Detox it. Get, get the toxins out. Get the bad things out of your, your body. You also want to detox your mind. You want to detox from information overload, from, you know, uh, stories that, that are too difficult for you. I, I don't have television because I can't handle anything. I'm too sensitive for commercials. They're all loud. They are all, you know, trying to sell something. Um, I can't handle any violence whatsoever. So any show that has violence, shooting, anything, I just, I can't watch it. So in 2011, I just detoxed my mind in that way by just getting rid of my television. And you need to detox your life. And this one is, uh, it, can be, it can be hard because this means that you have to detox from toxic people and toxic situations in your life um, and in your environment. So... There are, there are lots of ways that our immediate environment has things that we need to detox. So if you look at my office behind me, it's pretty neat, but there's still a lot of stuff. So I would benefit from, and there's a pile of papers over here that you can't see. I know that I would benefit from eliminating things from my environment. Um, my, my home is actually very clean and orderly because I can't handle external uh, chaos. I just can't. I can't handle mess, chaos. My kitchen is always clean. My floors are always clean. Everything is always organized because visually, to me, if there's mess around me, that's more uh, stress in my life. And, and I, I do everything I can to detox from any form of stress. And basically, it's 
what I'm talking about, the toxins in your body, the food, the cigarettes, the, the um, toxic friendships, the information overload, all of this is, it's not bringing you joy. And it, when you get rid of all of these things, or at least try to reduce them, um, if you try to do it all at once, that's cold turkey. Most people don't succeed cold turkey. So do it gradually. But when you get rid of these things, you open up space to find your joy. And you can open up the, the when you open up space, the universe brings you things. So you can fill that open space by meditating, by bringing a friend who you haven't seen in a long time into your home and serving tea, something that's going to bring you joy. And you'll find that your life is more peaceful and you're more capable of loving yourself. This is where self, loving yourself, is where your self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love comes from. We just live in such a chaotic world that you have to minimize all of the chaos that's outside of you. And then you will find the self-confidence and the self-esteem and the self-love and the self-joy that will fuel you to do all of these amazing things you want to do. So keep making your plans. Keep recording your dreams and your goals and your aspirations. And write them down. That's a very powerful tool. That's maybe another lesson for another day. But let go of the outcome. Just trust, just have some faith, just let, let the space exist for the opportunities and the signs and the new people and the new, the new situations to come and the new inspirations to pop into your mind. And once you're there, you'll realize I'm listening to myself. I'm not listening to someone else. I'm not listening to someone outside of me. I'm listening to me. And that means I'm trusting me. I'm growing, I'm feeling better about myself, and it's from that place that I can find the kind of business I want to build, or I can find the kind of goal I want to set, or the kind of life I want to lead, or the type of community I want to find. You'll find it from there, rather than all of these places and things and and bits of information and input that are outside of you because it's never outside of you. It's always inside of you. So um, trust your intuition, but clean, clean the space to get to your intuition. That's pretty much what I wanted to say today to help you find your belief in yourself. Self-belief, self-confidence, self-esteem, self-love, self-motivation. It all comes from the self. So thank you for listening to this very unique lesson today, which didn't give you any concrete information about how to build your business, but this is the concrete information you need to have in order to build the foundation for your business. And the foundation for your business is always and only you. It will never be anything other than you because it's your business. So I would love to make this interactive now and take some questions. Hi, Alex. I see you're here. Um, whoops. Let's see. Let me scroll up and take some questions. Actually, I need a drink of water. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> um, guys, if you can give me a thumbs up or a heart or a smiley face or something, let me know you're here. Has this been valuable to you? Um, have you learned something from it? I'm a teacher and I always ask for feedback so that I can know if what I'm teaching is helpful, is valuable, uh, is being received, is understood. If you were all sitting in my physical classroom, we would be able to have a conversation in real life. So thank you. I see some thumbs ups and, and some hearts. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, Saad Ismail says, great mission. And ma'am, you got a good, uh, big heart. Huge respect. Thank you, Saad. 
Um, please, people like me need guidelines from you. It's really necessary for me. I would like to be your student. You are Ismail, or uh, Saad Ismail, you are my student. You're my student right now. If you're not already a member of my virtual classroom, you should definitely join. Uh, let's see. Carla Trigo says, exactly, mindset, the core that connects you with your mission, passion, and joy. Exactly. Thank you, Carla, for summarizing everything I said. You got it. Exactly. Um, Shiraz Qureshi said, do you think if we ignore the criticized by people, we can become confident? Shiraz, are you still here and watching? Because my answer is yes. And I'm going to address your question a little bit. So uh, let me look and see if Shiraz, Shiraz, just uh, say hello if you're still here. Because ignoring the criticism of other people, one thing I've said, um, I think once or twice, I definitely said it before in um, the weekly show that I do with Rehan, and it's, it's actually a quote meme in my classroom, that what other people say about you is none of your business. And make that one of your mantras because what they are saying about you is their projection. It's only about them. It doesn't matter what you do. Like you could be, you could be dancing, you could be throwing money at them and they could still be terrible to you. So yes, ignore their criticism. It's very, very hard because we've lived in this era um, which is ending this era where we all believed that we need to get someone else's permission to do anything or someone else's approval of who we are. And that's false. It's a false belief. It's an old belief. It's outdated. It's antiquated. It's done. Those times are over. So, yes, you have to ignore that person. And Shiraz, I would actually say the more you're able to let that person throw swords at you in their words and not respond, the more you will be confident in yourself. Absolutely. The, um, I, one of my other quotes that I've put up somewhere is your triggers are your teachers. And what this means is that thing that triggers you, that makes you, oh, that hurt so much that you said that, or oh my God, I'm so mad that you said that, now I'm going to fight with you. <laughs> those things, those moments that trigger you, those are your teachers. So develop the habit, or, or even you can just self-attack, right? You get triggered and you go, oh, I'm just a just terrible person. I'm just no one. Why should I love myself? Those moments are exactly where if you can stop yourself and say, okay, this moment, this trigger is here to teach me something. What is it here to teach me? It's here to teach me that, that what that person just said is about them and not about me. This is a practice. This takes so much practice. If you are someone who gets it right away, congratulations, please become a, a teacher in my classroom and teach us how to do it quickly. Um, we're literally unlearning behavior that we've all learned in this lifetime. We've learned through school. We've learned through our parents and grandparents who learned through their parents and grandparents. We're unlearning this. We're building a new kind of world where we don't hurt each other, where we build peace, where we build community, where we build solutions to problems. And that's why we don't do this anymore. So even if you don't like what someone else is saying, you, you don't tell them that because you're not going to do what someone else maybe has done to you. And I put on my, my Facebook page, I think yesterday, uh, and I'll probably turn it into a meme if I haven't already, and that is filter everything you say through one question. And that one question is, will what I'm about to say make the world a better place? If it won't make the world a better place, don't say it. 
it's not going to help the world. Now you're learning this skill that the other person who criticizes you hasn't learned yet, but you teach by doing. You teach by demonstrating that you know how to do this. So Shiraz, thank you so much for this question. It's so important. And I think you help so many people by asking this question. And I'm actually going to uh, scroll down. Um, tell me, give me some thumbs up. Do you guys agree that Shiraz's question was really helpful? I think it was. I can't give a, can I give a thumbs up? Yay, I can. Look at me. I'm giving thumbs up. <laughs> um, give me some thumbs up if you think Shiraz's question was very helpful or um, write it in the comments so that I can see it. So Umer Siddique is here. Hey Umer, how are you? Um, all right, let me see if I can find some more questions here. Uh, please ask some questions. I'm going to actually take a little bit more time, probably another 10 minutes here with you all. So please ask some questions related to this lesson. It's such an important topic. Um, Carla says, I ask my hubby, no TV for me. I embrace positive information that creates awareness, the joy, the beauty of life, the excellence of all we do. Oh, Carla, that's beautiful. That's exactly what I teach. Um, then she says, see you, Amy. Thank you for all, all, all you do and all of your students. Carla, I'm so glad to have you as a mentor in the classroom. I can't even tell you enough. Thank you so much. Um, S.H. Kanzada says, kindly tell us about the role of anger also. Um, S.H. Kanzada, are you still here? Please comment if you are. The role of anger. So talking about anger is kind of an entirely different, um, it's a different energy, it's kind of a different conversation, but I think maybe you got an answer from the answer that I just provided uh, for the other question, and that is that you know, if someone else's anger is coming to you and it's triggering you, stop. See the trigger as an opportunity to learn and release it. If it's your anger that's coming up, then do the work to find out why. Why is the anger there? And my recommendation is to actually close your eyes and go into a meditation and speak to the anger. Ask it why it's there. Why are you angry right now? And allow answers to come because you're going to get the surface answers. If you're angry, you know, I'm angry because that person cut me off in traffic or I'm angry because my boss just cut my pay. Those are the surface answers. Those are the triggers that brought you to this place of anger. Unpeel all of those and then sit and listen. Why is the anger there? Maybe it's there because it wants you to pay attention to yourself. Maybe it wants you to love yourself more. Maybe it wants you to feed yourself better food. Maybe it wants you to feed yourself chocolate cake. Listen to your body and trust it. Don't try and figure it out. Listen. There's so much value in listening to what's inside of you. That's why... As I said before, trusting your intuition is going to be so valuable. Um, hi, Essen, Salim, how are you? Uh, Saad Ismail, yes, so you have to build a strong mindset. But it's not like it's this challenge that's out there. I have to build a strong mindset. You have to build a practice of self-love, and that will give you a strong mindset. It will give you the self-confidence, the self-esteem, the self-love, the self-awareness, um, the self-strength in difficult situations that will build the strong mindset that you're talking about. Uh, okay, Saad Ismail says, ma'am, I have a question. All good and bad situations are only situations. We give a meaning. Yeah. That's not a question. That's an awesome statement. You're exactly right. Nothing is good nor bad. It's all part of our human experience. And our reactions 
are all there for us to learn and grow. That's why if you adopt this, you know, the, the phrase triggers are my teachers. So every time I'm triggered, I need to stop and ask, what is this moment, this trigger here to teach me? That will build your stronger mindset. And as Saad Ismail says, it's not good nor bad. It's our minds, it's our emotions that are defining it that way. And you know this this is work that I have been doing for years. I'm still doing it. I'm not perfect. I still get triggered. Uh, I still get upset and angry and sad and cry. I, I'm human. Um, I'm human. But I want to be in control of the triggers. I want to feel more emotions of joy than of anger and frustration. So, and, and I'm doing that work. The, um, I, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ram Dass. Ram Dass is a spiritual teacher and he's incredibly emotional. He cries, cries about so much because he feels so much emotion. And that, I'm the same way. Um, if you watched my lesson on empathy, um, I talked a lot about, I am an empath. Uh, I feel other people's emotions. Um, I can read what other people are feeling and going through and I feel it in my own body. Um, so I'm working with that gift that I have, which has been really a very challenging gift for me for all these years. Um, but I'm working with it. And what I can't do is deny it, right? It's actually getting stronger as I do more of my work, like we're talking about here, my self work, it's getting stronger. So what does that mean? It means that if I'm going to be triggered, you know, I can be triggered to an uglier place probably, but I also feel beautiful emotions, love, joy, tenderness, so much deeper and it's so much more beautiful for me. So if you want to learn more about this, you can look up Ram Dass because he teaches about this. And he, he has actually helped me over the years um, as one of my many teachers to make me feel like I'm not the only one who can cry about anything beautiful. Um, I went to uh, Kirtan um, live uh, chanting event over the weekend and there were, you know, it was kind of, the audience was sitting down, the performance was already happening, and my friend saw her friend kind of across the room, and they signaled to each other, and they were drawing little hearts to each other, and blowing kisses, and it's clear, I, I felt this connection between these two women, they loved each other so much, and I knew that they were going to hug when they saw in person afterwards, and I was, I felt such emotion watching the two of them you know, just recognize and love each other from across the room that I actually drew this big heart <laughs> in the room because that's how I felt in the moment. So each moment, each, each situation, you're right, we give the meaning to it, but it doesn't mean that we take, we should take away all meaning. It doesn't mean that we should take away all emotion. You want to feel the emotions of joy and love and peace and harmony because that's what we're all striving for. That's why we're here. And we're not here to be robots. We're not AI. We are here to be humans, having a human experience. So Saad Ismail, thank you so much for that comment. Um, Umer says he's fine. Thank you. I'm glad. Pakistanis, uh, Naeem Haider says Pakistanis are learning character development that lacked as a subject in their classes. Yeah, Naeem, I, I, I've learned that from a lot of my Pakistani friends. And you're not, it's not just Pakistan that, that this is the case. Um, this is actually why I've developed the career that I have uh, over the last 17 years since I started working. Um, since I became an adult and started working professionally, what I have done is bring um, lessons and skills to students that aren't being taught in schools. And these soft skills have been part of that. Soft skills, social emotional skills, um, 
global awareness, self-confidence, communication skills, all of these things aren't taught in schools. We don't teach relationship building. We don't teach meditation. We don't teach um, conflict resolution. We just graduate um, people from school with the maths and the sciences and all of that, but we don't actually teach them, I call it, the rules to the game of life. And those are exactly what I'm talking about today, exactly what I've written about all these years, what I've taught about, what all of my curriculum is, um, and what you will always find embedded in my entrepreneurship lessons, without a doubt. Um, Naeem, thank you. And it's, it's unfortunate. It makes me sad when I look at the global education system. And I do. I look at education everywhere in the world to understand it because I want to change it. Um, and it's very sad because we've essentially created education systems that produce robots. We get these beautiful, delicate, little four or five-year-old children who enter into these systems. And I, I'm not saying anything about the beautiful, well-meaning teachers who are there teaching children. You know, the math and the sciences uh, and literacy, it's all very important, but it's all been taught at the exception of everything else that's important to life. So, you know, we, we push children through the education system and we never teach them the things that they feel personally would be valuable to them. Um, that they feel would actually help them to feel connected to the content that they're learning. We just don't. And then we graduate them into the world like um, Naeem, like you, graduate you into the world because the education system never teaches you these things about self, self esteem and self confidence and not responding to triggers and loving yourself. And then, and then here you are and you're living your life and you make mistakes at work or you make mistakes in your marriage or your relationships or your friendships. And we all do that as a collective human family, but now is the time that we're fixing all of that. So thank you for that comment. Um, <laughs> Naeem, you're welcome for staying, saying your name. I, I do try to read all of these. Um, we need to train the trainers. Absolutely. Uh, that's actually, uh, Naeem, you kind of sound like an educator. That's a term in education for training trainers. And that's part of the work that I do. I train trainers. I train teachers how to do what I do. Um, Saad Ismail says, you're a great teacher from now on. I'm your student. Thank you for guiding me. I think you said that up above also. Thank you for saying that again. God bless you always. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. So Naeem, I'm not sure exactly what you mean there because it's a little bit of a cliche. Um, but I would say when the going gets tough, we find peace. We don't get tough. We find peace. Let's see what other comments we have. Uh, Muhammad Raza Ahmad, yes, uh, all of my lectures are put on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Amy Carrier Empowers. Um, you can find the link to it if you follow me on Facebook. Um, just go to my page, Amy Carrier. Um, it's, I'm tagged up in the description of this video. Follow me there and you'll see all of my links, including my YouTube link. And you can actually watch all of my um, weekly lessons. So Walid Ahmed Khan says, Amy, you're great. Thank you. That's very kind. Uh, one of the prime issues many Pakistanis is facing is indecisiveness. Can we address that or can we rec uh, recommend articles or books? So I will address this a little bit. It's actually a bigger issue, but Indecisiveness happens, I believe, when we don't fully feel excited or connected or in, in alignment with our choices. If you are passionate about something, you're not indecisive, right? The decision's made. You're passionate. You're excited about it. And this is, why, this is exactly why I'm saying you have to do this work in order to find the self-confidence 
to believe in your passion, to believe in your idea, to turn it into um, a, a business idea. So if you're indecisive, it's because you have choices, none of which excite you, none of which interest you. So you have to find what is uniquely yours. And uh, hopefully you saw most of this video because I've talked about many things that are all related to this that will actually help you um, to find what's inside of you and to let go of the things that don't excite you. Obviously, yes, we all have to pay our bills. We all have to support our families. We all have to pay rent. Um, but the things that excite you are what you should put your time and your energy and your focus into. Um, if you are left making a choice between a couple of things that you don't really love that much, sit with it for a little while. Get out of your head about it. Um, you can maybe do a quick list of here are the things, the pros and cons for each of my choices, the things I like and don't like. Just do it quickly. Just It's called a brain dump. And set it aside. And then just walk away. Just walk away, let it be, and then come back and just sit. How do I feel about these choices? And see what comes up. Again, it's this, it's the listening that happens when you sit with yourself, when you get rid of the external distractions. Uh, Walid, I hope that helped. If you can uh, write in the comments, let me know. That would be great. Uh, Sun Tzu says, how do you keep the motivation? Um, that's a different topic. So uh, Sun Tzu, I don't think you're a member of my classroom, so please join and ask that question. That's a great question. Um, Shukat Niazi PMLN, how to detox my mind. Uh, so I talked about this. Definitely uh, go back and watch what I said in this video earlier. How to detox your mind. It starts with detox your environment. Stop listening to all of the information outside of you. Um, and I would say continue to follow my class, join my classroom. If you're not a member of my classroom, those of you who are watching through Ray Han's page, if you're not a member of my classroom, you're not going to benefit from all of the classroom mentors who give lessons every day of the week because they give lessons in my classroom. So make sure that you join, answer the three questions that are required of you to join, and then you'll be able to learn from the other mentors, including Carla, who can help to answer that question. Um, Ermalyn Drake says, I am working at a higher education institution, and a lot of what we teach are decided at a, oh my gosh, yes. I think I need to have another video just to talk about education. Um, Ermalyn Drake, where are you from? Just write it in the comments if you don't mind, please. She says, he says, um, a lot of what we are uh, what we teach are decided at a political system and politicians rely on so-called rational evidence-based knowledge. How can we create a shift in their thinking? Oh, wow. Uh, Ermeline, connect with me. This is what I've been doing for 17 years. I've been trying to cause that shift for 17 years. So let's connect. This is a much bigger conversation. Um, but I love your question, so I will look for you writing to me soon. Um, Naeem Haider says, many people are great at doing, but fail while teaching. You're a great teacher. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, the, everybody's different, right? We have to have lots of different kinds of people in order to fulfill all the roles that, that are needed in the world. So thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. Um, Saad Ismail says, Miss Amy, why do people get so nervous? You know, nervousness, I believe, comes from really the lack of self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-confidence. So everything that I've been talking about today, um, 
And if you're not already a, a member of my classroom, ta let's talk about it in my classroom because this lesson is uh, way over. <laughs> I went over time, so I need to wrap it up. Um, but I love these questions, such amazing questions, such great conversation today. Thank you all so much for being here. And just remember that, um, and I'll do my best to outline uh, what I've talked about today so that everybody can really benefit from it and have some reminders. Um, but remember, this is all about you. You're here to love yourself and walk this journey in this body, with this mind, this consciousness, this heart. This is all about you. So walk your journey, make it as unique as you are. Don't worry about other people. Don't respond to anyone who's sending you anything other than love. Respond to those who love you because it makes us feel good. It helps to lift us up. Um, but don't rely on it because even the people who love us might leave us. Um, so you have to find it inside. So hopefully I've given you all some tips that are valuable today. Hopefully you've learned something. Please absolutely join my virtual classroom. Uh, it's a group here on Facebook called Amy Carrier's Classroom. You can learn so much and participate in it. Like these questions you're asking today are phenomenal. This is what I want to happen in my classroom. Please, 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 please. Um, there's no self-promotion. There's no advertising. It's just questions that we all get to learn from. So everybody who asked a question, go ask a question in my classroom. Let's have a, a richer, deeper conversation. Um, and please follow me on Facebook. I share a lot of these insights that I'm sharing with you today during the week. Um, I've got a lot of things going on. I'll be sharing some more videos. I've got another video uh, project I'm going to be starting. And I try to share absolutely every one of my classroom mentors videos on my personal page. So make sure you're following me, make sure you join the classroom so that you can get everything. And um, if you liked this lesson today and you would like to just hit play while you're doing your chores around your house, um, you can find it later today up on YouTube, Amy Carrier Empowers. And um, you'll also be able to find every one of the lessons that I've taught. Um, on my YouTube channel as well. And uh, most of the, the shows that I've done with Rayhan last week was tricky. We ended up on two different platforms. So I haven't updated, I haven't uploaded it to, um, to YouTube yet, but there's a lot of great resources there. And I thank you all so much for being here. Um, it means so much to me. It's, uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting more and more used to teaching to my computer screen. Um, but I appreciate the feedback and the questions and the hearts and the thumbs up because it tells me that there are people on the other side of this, uh, this computer. Um, I actually have a former student of mine who's coming to work with me right now. So I was expecting the door to ring. She's supposed to be here around 2.30. You could have met her, but I think we'll probably end before she gets here. Um, Ermalyn Drake, great. I'm glad you're going to connect with me. Um, Hassan Arshad. Hassan is one of the mentors. He's Pakistani. He's one of the mentors in the classroom and he is teaching there as well. So be sure you join and learn from all these other brilliant people. Every single one of the mentors I have watched, I have screened, I've paid attention to what they know and what value they bring to the world and I wanted them to be able to communicate to as many of you as possible. So um, be sure you join us there. Um, Mahmoud Hashimi, I my very first lesson that I ever taught was how to make your fear of failure work for you. Your question here is why should we get ourselves up after failure? Um, I think you should go to my YouTube channel right now and watch my first lesson. I talk about that. Um, Naeem Haider, thank you so much. I will keep it up as long as I can. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate everything so much. And um, I'm sorry if I did not get to your question today. There's so many. Uh, I will do my best, but if you're in my classroom, I respond to every single question. Do you hear that? 
every single question in my classroom. That way I know where they all are. So if, if there's no other reason to join my classroom than that, post your question and you'll get a response from me. Do it for that reason. All right, everyone. It's great connecting with you today. Happy Monday. Whatever challenges you face this week, um, just love yourself and work on building your self-confidence and um, know that you're on a very important journey and you are very important in this world right now. So keep going and don't give up. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.